Meat drives the economy in many communities in the Midwest and other parts of the country. But the process of making meat also has a global impact on the environment and the climate. According to the United Nations, 14% of human greenhouse emissions come from livestock. That includes everything from the fuel and fertilizer it takes to grow feed to the waste the animals put out themselves. But not all animals have the same footprint. When you break it down, 8% of livestock emissions come from poultry, about 9% come from pork, and then there's beef. Beef cattle account for 40% of global livestock emissions. That's weighing on the industry. And next, we'll visit two farms with different ideas on how to grow without adding to that climate impact. Joan Ruskamp starts her day checking the lots at her feed yard near Dodge, Nebraska. I'll make sure everybody gets up. You know, if there's a lame one, he'll tend to stay laying down, so we want to make sure they're up and moving. Meanwhile, her husband Steve serves up a breakfast of hay and corn to 4,000 hungry cattle. There's an exact amount of pounds that each pen will receive. Younger cattle that are growing have more hay and less corn. Cattle that are finishing and putting on more muscle are getting more corn and less hay. Nebraska has more than two million cattle in feedlots like this, making it one of the top cattle feeding states in the nation. But whether it's a feedlot in Nebraska, Kansas, or Texas, it's built to fatten up cattle in a hurry. In only six months' time, they can pile on around 1,000 pounds of meat. Joan Ruskamp says the secret is their stomach. Cattle have a rumen that does amazing things with feed. So they're eating all these things I don't want to eat, and they're giving me a great burger, a great steak, a great roast to eat in the end. But the same cow stomach that turns corn into meat also has a troubling side effect. As they eat corn or grass, cattle regurgitate methane, a greenhouse gas many times more powerful than carbon dioxide. In fact, when it comes to global greenhouse gas emissions, cattle are one of the worst offenders. If you look globally and you just compare every sector, I'm talking electric utilities, steel, automobiles, beef, globally, beef is at the top, okay? The highest emissions per dollar of output, higher than electric utilities globally. The cattle industry is trying to get a grip on how to reduce that footprint. Kim Stackhouse Lawson is the sustainability director for the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. She's been researching which parts of the industry contribute the most emissions. 70% of beef's carbon footprint actually happens on the ranch at the cow-calf level. Stackhouse Lawson says in a way, the U.S. actually has a head start over the rest of the world when it comes to controlling the carbon footprint of cattle. And that's because U.S. feedlots are the most efficient at turning pounds of feed into pounds of beef. Cattle have gotten bigger. That's from genetic improvements, so we've been very focused on maximizing resource use. Go back 50 years to 1965. At that time, a steer went to slaughter weighing right around 1,000 pounds. Today, with better beef genetics and nutrition, that same animal weighs over 1,300 pounds. With fewer cattle, the U.S. produces 30% more beef. If the rest of the world was as efficient as the United States, it would go a long way in cutting global greenhouse emissions from cattle. But not every country can grow feed like the Midwest. And some believe the current system relies too much on fields of corn and soybeans that add to the environmental cost. They want to move beef away from feedlots and row crops. We're rewriting history. We want to change the way things are done, and we want to do it with a group of cattle that fit with our, our nature situation and for a lot of other people, so. Suck it yeah, suck it yeah. Suck it yeah, girlies. Come on, let's go, girls. Suck it yeah. Del Fike raises cattle in southeastern yeah, Nebraska. Yeah, they never go to a feedlot. Instead, they start and finish their lives feeding on pasture, designed to grow on grass, yeah, not grain. Yeah. They're engineered to do everything on forage like cows were intended. The switch to grass-fed beef was a huge change for Fike. Until a couple years ago, he farmed 7,000 acres of corn and soybeans and fed cattle in a conventional feedlot. Now he's down to around 500 acres, nearly all grass. You can have more cows, more pounds, and do it in a way that is better for the environment if you use the right genetics. Fike says keeping cattle on grass takes crops like corn and soybeans out of the picture, 
along with the fuel and fertilizer needed to grow them. That cuts carbon emissions. Also, planting prairie where crops used to be pulls excess carbon out of the air and stores it in the soil. This was all cropland, so this, and this would be a highly erodible land. It's true grass-fed cattle do a lot to save carbon, but strictly in terms of greenhouse emissions, they're still at a disadvantage. Kim Stackhouse Lawson says it's because of efficiency. At the feedlot, she says a calf is ready for slaughter by the time it's 18 months old. If we were grass finishing an animal, they might be anywhere from two to two and a half years old before they reach the same finished endpoint. Since grass-fed cattle have more time before slaughter, they typically have a larger footprint. But Stackhouse Lawson says at the same time, keeping cattle on pasture provides benefits for wildlife habitat and water. A grass finish system might have a smaller water footprint because oftentimes irrigation is used to water crops. So it's a trade-off and it's about balancing those trade-offs. There are different ways to meet the growing appetite for beef in the U.S. and abroad, and they each have something to offer. Feedlots are efficient. The whole reason I'm here doing this is to feed people. Grass is green. Just let the cow be a cow. But that's the challenge for the beef industry in a climate-conscious world, finding a way to meet that demand while keeping the carbon footprint of cattle in check.